It's a great pleasure to welcome Miguel Abasu uh, to the new school, and um, he was professor at the uh, Université de Paris 7, Jussieu. Uh, he was also president of the Collège International de Philosophie, um, and many other distinctions. Uh, his work, um, the first work was on Saint-Just, and he was also uh, responsible for the edition of Saint-Just, the Oeuvre Complète of Saint-Just, which came out in about 2004, I think. It's a magnificent one-volume paperback, which was full of <coughs> extraordinary text. Um, there's work on William Morris, the 19th century art crafts, um, English tradition. English socialist tradition, and it was what utopia was the theme of the last session. It's work on Thomas More, Utopia, Alter Benjamin, and Ireland, Claude Lefort, a whole variety of, of uh, a body of work, a significant body of work. Um, and it's, I mean, I, my uh, awareness of, of uh, Miguel Abensua's work came through uh, a mutual friend, Vanessa Leclerc. Um, but it was also the, I read a book by him that came out in 1997 called La Democratie contre l'État. Democracy against the state, Marx, and the Machiavellian moment. Uh, and it's um, taken far too long for that book to appear in English, but it has appeared in English with Policy Press as Democracy against the state. And there'll be a session at the Brecht Forum tomorrow evening with people in this room. I'm not yet in that, uh, Around this book. I think it's 7 o'clock tomorrow? 7 o'clock at the book. <coughs> and um, in that book, um, I mean, it's, um, it is a reading of Marx uh, based on this 1843 manuscript, the notes on um, Hegel's philosophy of right, and where where, where Miguel Abansur identifies a Marx that is at odds with uh, the state, and where there's a, a, con a conception of true democracy in Marx, which is true democracy against the state form, uh, which would then lead one to at least complicate the, the, uh, the history, which we've already rehearsed in this conference, of the, of the identification of Marxism with the state form through a tendency perhaps in Marx himself, but certainly there in Lenin, um, <coughs> attempt to give a, 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 an alternative reading of Marx which allows us to see a conception of the political at work in, in Marx's work. Um, and also what's a particular um, suggestion, well, particularly suggestive when I read that book, when also there, there are these Laurentian and Shermanian themes in a democracy continent, which are very apropos given the context of this conference. You can read the book and find out for yourself. But the last paragraph, or the last footnote, uh, the last page of the, the democracy continent, there's this uh, footnote reference to Levinas. And uh, there's this little moment in Levinas in uh, Autrement Quatre, where Levinas uh, makes reference to the notion of anarchy and talks about uh, the idea of the, the state not being able to assemble itself into one. And for me, then, I began to speculate, thanks to you, on this the possibility of a connection between a certain understanding of Levinas and a conception of politics that wouldn't be Levinas's conception of politics necessarily, but something perhaps a little more interesting. And would we'll be able to be linked to a certain conception, of, a certain reading of Marx. And, um, the, uh, the title tonight is, uh, is on Levinas Anarchy uh, between, so Le Levinas Anarchy between Metapolitics and Politics. So please join me in welcoming to the new school, Vida Abansu. Thank you very much for this uh, generous presentation. And uh, I 
and thank you to uh, New School for this invitation. Uh, <clears throat> in advance, uh, I apologize for my English accent. <laughs> so leaving us anarchy between metapolitics and politics. <coughs> As the proposition between suggests, our aim is to locate what might not be locatable, that is to say, anarchy. The question is then, where can we situate anarchy in Levinas' philosophy? Can we consider it to be somewhere between metapolitics and politics? This question is legitimate because we know that the Levinasian sense of anarchy must be distinguished from anarchism. Anarchy cannot be reduced to its political sense in as much as it has to do with the unique intrigue that Levinas calls proximity, that's the fact of a neighbor. However, and this is where the question becomes quite complex, even if one cannot confine anarchy to its political sense, it still somewhat concerns and affects politics. It is as if Levinas deliberately recourse to such an adopted charge term is linked to one of the most profound aspects of his philosophy. To return to our initial question, why state that anarchy can be found somewhere between metapolitics and politics? In a sense, because anarchy appears at two different levels in Levinas' work. On the one hand, it refers to what precedes all anarchy. It is absolute beginning and prior to all principle. On the other hand, this relationship with the pre-original does not exclude a certain political sense. An example of a double nature of Levinasian Anarchy is when Levinas tries to describe the term obsession <coughs> as an anarchic movement in the second half of note three of otherwise than being page 154 of English edition. I quote, the notion of anarchy as we are introducing it here as a meaning prior to the political or anti-political meaning currently attributed to it. It would be self-contradictory to set it up as a principle in the sense that anarchists understand it. Anarchy cannot be sovereign like anarchy. It can only disturb the state, but in a radical way making possible moments of negation without any affirmation. The state then cannot set itself up as a whole, but on the other hand, anarchy can be stated, yet disorder as an irreductible meaning as a refusal of synthesis. Our question gives rise to other most notably, notably what do we mean by metapolitics? The term metapolitics cannot be found in Levinas' philosophy. We use it, however, in order to conjure up the dimension over than political by the use of the Greek meta, that is to say, a plurality of meaning. Although the first sense of meta is after of the eye, it also means, as Heidegger points out in the fundamental concept of metaphysics, a movement akin to a term. In other words, a departure from something in order to turn toward something else. This movement or this turn permits a departure from a particular being and a movement toward the other. Metaphysics, therefore, signifies the knowledge that goes between the senses, the knowledge that is because of a term supra-sensible. When applied to Levinas' food, the term metapolitics does not refer to its technical or topical sense, but which comes after politics. Metapolitics cannot be understood in such a way because, as Levinas writes in the famous text, politics 
comes after ethics, but in turn becomes first philosophy. Metapolitics will, however, obtain meaning with respect to its content. It will signify the term that consists of leaving something in order to go towards something else. In this case, metapolitics is a departure from politics, a more a move away from the particular being that is politics <coughs> in order to go towards as other that would be metapolitics. Thus, metapolitics attempts to embody such a reversal. When closely examined, this term designates a complex journey. If the meta of metapolitics means a term or a departure, a leave of politics in order to proceed elsewhere, or a passage beyond politics, it nevertheless means a source or a provenance, that is to say, an underneath. It is as if the effect of metapolitics is the call to our attention and underneath that permits a lead of politics and that opens a passage beyond politics. In defining our responsibility for the other, Levinas insists on this complex structure, on the trajectory that goes from the, the underneath to the beyond. Moreover, it is not question here of founding the practice of politics on a philosophical system in order to do away with its immediacy and its empirical nature. For, we, for this would signify that metapolitics is politics based on principle or on many principles. By contrast, metapolitics must be put in resonance and in consonance with what occurs in the ethical relationship with the other. That is to say, I put a responsibility that is justified by no prayer, prayer commitment, such as the meta-ontological and meta-logical structure of anarchy takes forms. It is as if metapolitics <coughs> is the analogon of this departure of from ontology. Is it not thanks to this reversal that we can better situate anarchy on the way out of politics by turning away from politics to reach another dimension? Does this turn, this way out of politics, not affect that from, from which it turns away? Is it not, however, enough to situate? One must also describe. Our journey with us <coughs> comprises two elements. The first one, a description of the intrigue of anarchy, or anarchy and proximity. And the second one, a critical essay on the effects on politics, or the disturbance of politics. So the first part, the intrigue of anarchy. Before engaging in the question of intrigue of anarchy, as it is developed in otherwise than being, it will be important to briefly analyze one of the first appearances of the term anarchy in Levinas' thought, that is to say, in totality and infinity. Very early in the elaboration of his philosophy, Levinas sets forth the pluralist conception of the so of social. In the presentation of his conference on Times and the Other, Levinas states, we wish, I put, we wish to move toward a pluralism that does not amalgam into the world. 